Majora's Mask 3D is coming soon just like we all wanted, but I really hope it isn't like the Ocarina of Time remake where improved graphics, master quests, and a touchscreen inventory is all we get. Speaking of improved graphics, why is the Ling statue still a source of creepypasta? You couldn't change that, Nintendo? Guess they wanted a Ben Drowned sequel. Well, you know me, gotta throw my opinions out there on what changes I'd like to see in the Majora's Mask remake. Because why not make a good game even better? The developers have even said that they've made some changes to make it feel more accessible to new players without losing its identity. Plus, I just want to see if I got any of these right. Probably not, but you never know. Only five entries this time because that's all I can think of at the moment. Alright, let's start it off! You know, it kind of broke my heart that they didn't reorchestrate the music for OOT 3D. I mean, they did it for Star Fox 64 3D, but not for Zelda. Well, here's another shot. I'd love to hear this game with some remix tracks. Song of Healing, Clock Town, Termina Field, Deku Palace, even the Astro Observatory. Mm, I love that one. Please don't let this opportunity go by again, guys. Music was always such an important element in these games. And with one of your key items being a flute, a forest bagpipe, Goron bongos, and a fish skeleton guitar, why not go that extra mile to fully flesh out the soundtrack so we can hear some of those tunes in a beautiful new tone? Songs. Yeah, that sounds like a good segue. Place. Did I mention I'm not really good at playing the fish guitar? I'd be much happier if I could just have the touchscreen be an instant jukebox player. I liked how its Big Brother's 3D treatment gave us the notes to look at while we played them, but for times where we had to keep playing a song like The Elegy of Emptiness, I'd prefer just to press the song on the screen and have it instantly play it. That's it! I don't have to say any more, wouldn't want to waste your time. Hey, that reminds me. In a game where time is one of your most important aspects, you're going to need a lot of them in the dungeons. Why, you could get lost, or confused, or both. It's a frustrating combination that could kill your fun dead in its tracks. Personally, I've always wanted the time in the dungeons to either come to a crawl, or just stop completely so I wouldn't have to worry about that. Yeah, there's a song that slows down time, but I want the problem of worrying about time to never enter my head when I enter into these places so I don't have to play beat the clock literally for every puzzle and boss fight. Consistency isn't even an argument here, guys. The time actually stops once you beat a boss, see? You can take it away for this? That wouldn't be a problem, would it? Having time pass by normally in the fields or in Clock Town while giving players more time to figure out these headache-inducing places out sure sounds reasonable to me. Speaking of dungeons... Majora could use a new place to let us figure out complicated problems in. After all, it is a Zelda game lacking in that department as it only houses four main dungeons. We could have a new one at the very beginning of the game, or even one at the very end. Clock Town's Clock Tower could actually make a nice mini dungeon or even on top of the moon. Hey, if they actually do put one in the Clock Tower in third place actually happens, you wouldn't have to worry about the last five minutes left in the game. Or even better, just grab that stupid Gibdo scavenger hunt and turn that into a dungeon. The Gibdo mask is useless compared to the stone mask anyways. I personally don't need a master quest for this installment, as I still find it to have the most frustrating dungeons in the franchise. I just need new ones to make the game feel fresh yet familiar. Remakes don't always have to be the exact same thing with minor upgrades. Just look at Mario 64 DS, Metroid Zero Mission, or the freaking Pokemon remakes! Fresh coat of paint with some new bells and whistles and goodies? What's wrong with that? Absolutely nothing! Longtime subscribers on my channel should have seen this one coming, but if this is your first time coming here, I have a major gripe with MM that is hard for me to look past. You have to play between 30 minutes to over an hour before you can even save your progress the first time. Then every other time, your choice is either quick save at an owl statue and stop playing, or go back to day one and lose your arrows, bombs, rupees, and keys that you had in your endless pocket supply, I was really hoping it would be on the Wii U Virtual Console so I could have that restart point in case something goes wrong during a side quest, but apparently Nintendo hasn't figured out how to put those classics on there yet. Why should I have to go back to square one and wait around for everything to fall into place? Why should I have to leave a dungeon just to save my progress? That's just wasting time from my point of view. I'm really hoping the owl statues learn a lesson from the ones in Skyward Sword, where one chance is something to laugh at and they show up in nearly every room in the dungeons. Remember guys, you're going to be playing this on the go, so convenience would be a blessing. And that'll do it for this list, and if you have a difference of opinion, I'd like to hear the changes you'd like to see for Majora's Mask 3D. Please don't let me complain about the save system anymore. Please? You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you?
Well, let's heal those woes and recommend some more videos. Up there in the top left corner, you'll see a review I did for Shovel Knight. That's right, for those of you who missed it, there's a recent review I've put up. <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it? Uh, next to it in the top right corner, you'll see a list I did for 10 more of my favorite Easter eggs in video games. Because why not make a sequel to the most popular video I've ever done? Going in a Z direction to the bottom left spot is a review I did for Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Because, you know, I have to get some more work done on the next week of thing. And for a video plug, we have What If Nintendo Made Metroid 64 by Steve Ohobo, a very well edited and narrated video with lots of good examples and even does video plugs for other people as well. If I could give some advice here, and I believe that's what you would want to hear from me right now, is that when making a speculation video like this, it's good to give off a brief history so viewers will get a clear understanding of the topic like you did. However, it felt like you went on a little too long after you even barely mentioned Metroid 64, leading some to believe if you were going a little off topic or if the title was misleading. I do suggest finding a more proper structure to your setup, letting your viewers know that you will talk about it after a lengthy history, or just saying something like, remember this part for when I get to Metroid 64. That's my little advice, but yeah, keep up the good work. Alright, time to get to work on something else. I'm not entirely better yet, <laughs> but I'm getting there. So, uh, later everyone, and Happy New Year!